It's Jack Pinter. Matthew, nice to see you. We made it to Friday, another virtual virtual week. And I see over your side, it seems to be formal Friday. What's what's going on there? Well, you know, I, I'm struggling. I've got a 14-year-old at home. It's homeschooling. I thought if I dressed up as a head teacher, I might be able to get him to, to pay a little bit more attention and actually spend more than roughly, I'd say, a highest point, 90 minutes on his education today. I'm not sure how it's worked, but the proof will be uh, <laughs> proof will be in how, how many emails I get back from his teachers uh, saying uh, what's been done incompletely or hasn't been handed in or whatever. But I just thought I'd exert a little authority, try something new in this uh, in this virtual classroom environment. <laughs> in this desperate classroom environment. So that's, viewers, why teachers wear ties, to get you to be receptive for 93 minutes, not just 90 minutes. I never knew that. I know that now. All right, so today we're going to riff on education, which is, uh, which is a, a lot of people. I know my wife had about five conversations this week about homeschooling and how everyone was pulling their hair out and freaking out. So if we look first at the child, we are patronising them. They are wonderful, super individuals. They're the future. They're going to change our nappies and maybe buy us a house. I don't know. What are they interested in? It's probably, I don't know, Minecraft, Xbox, driving, climbing trees and curling a football in the garden. Slightly mm. different curriculum. So any thoughts on child learning? Well, I think I think the interesting thing about kids will kids will learn when they want to learn something. And I guess the, the challenge is, is do they want to learn what is being foisted upon them, what they're being squeezed through? And, and the answer, obviously, sadly, is no. I mean, as 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 we know, you don't have to teach a child how to walk. It will learn of its own volition. You don't have to have to teach a child how to talk anything a child will want to want to learn. They will learn without any pressure, without any forcing, without any timetable. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to schedule a 45-minute lesson to learn Minecraft or to master whatever video game or to curl the football. They'll do it as, as we did for hours and hours and hours on end, and it'll never feel like forced education. Yes, exactly. Sort of play-based learning, which is fantastic. In stark contrast to that, this this is uh, centred in London. You look at these imposing red brick Victorian schools, which are a little bit gothic and a bit, a bit spooky in winter. So if we look at that, I don't know if anyone outside of University Challenge, I'm just going to sort of read this list, you know, go through the hard subjects of what the transfer was. No pain, no learning. No pain and no gain in, in most cases. You know, chemistry, molecules and elements, or physics, heat, light, electricity, gravity, history, finding out about a lot of dead white men, geography. How many sheep are there in New Zealand? Mm, I don't know. And I learned this in 1975. It might have changed a bit. Uh, mathematics, formulae, I remember some, I don't remember most. Language, very interesting. I still have a court case against my French teacher. Verbs, grammar and tenses. None of it was any use in Paris, mate. And then IT, coding a language which may or may not be relevant in three minutes time. So the institution of education in schools, what are your thoughts? Well, I just don't think it's preparing us for life as it will be. And as you said, with those those 19th century schools, I mean, they were built for classroom learning, you know, desk after desk after desk, the cane, the punishment. <laughs> The, uh, I mean, that was what's, what schooling was. And I think I think our buildings are no longer fit for purpose. And we can't knock them down because obviously there's no money, especially now for that. And so that, this has to be repurposed. And I guess also, you know, does the, does the curriculum need to be repurposed as well? And do we need to get closer to things that, that kids actually will learn, and will want to learn and will use? And I know, reflecting on my own learning, many of the things that I do professionally, I have no formal training for whatsoever. I learned them because I wanted to learn them. I used to do, uh, I used to give uh, uh, insets for, for teachers on how to teach Shakespeare. And the first thing I would say to them is I have no drama degree, no English degree, yeah, yeah, yeah. no drama background. I've never been an actor. I've never done anything yet. I've learned this and I can teach it to you. And in the same way you can learn this and teach it to, to other people. But interesting, Matthew, when I, when I would say those things, the, my sponsor, which was an educational authority 
said to me, no, don't say that. Don't come across as <laughs> not an expert. No, you have to be the, uh, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's interesting that uh, I, th I think it is very 20th century, 19th and 20th century, this idea that experts are going to uh, uh, give us knowledge and then we're going to take this knowledge and pass it on to another generation. It's ridiculous. We don't even know the jobs that are going to be, yeah. uh, that are going to occupy our children and our children's children. I mean, we can't really have a sense of what they are. So they just don't seem to be, schools and educational institutions don't really seem to be uh, on the edge of the curve. I think they're following behind. Exactly. So there's this magical, mythical thing, the certificate, I'm the expert. But what's that really about? So we're going to come to another more useful piece of paper uh, after this. So you and I, autodidacts, having a laugh in classrooms these days, virtual classrooms, riffing with the kids, getting down with the, uh, with the, with the guys on the street, and that's working. So I'll, mm. I'll give you a couple of things I would love to transfer to my lads to get them street ready or future job ready. Resilience. Uh, persuasive mm. communication skills, inner confidence, problem solving, a, a degree of self-knowledge, being able to make a decision or two, turning their dreams into reality, their work into results, not feeling isolated, yes, feeling engaged and part of something where they give and they receive. So there's a sort of engagement in society that I'm, that's my wish for the kids. So over to you, Jack. How would you augment that? Yeah, I, I think those are universal human skills. And I think that fundamentally is actually really important that no matter what you do, if you have a resilience, if you know how to bounce back from challenges, if you're taught those things, if you're taught how to communicate confidently, that's going to serve you wh whatever you do, whether you're, whether you're a chemistry professor or whether you're counting sheep in New Zealand or whatever you do, <laughs> in any of those things. And I think, uh, I think there's just not a lot of focus on that. Uh, and, uh, uh, and there's an opportunity, I think, as you say, to, to what are the skills that really benefit society? Of course, all these yeah. things do. But how can we put a little bit more in the hands of a learner? I would love for my 14 year old to be able to walk into school and say, you know what? I'm not interested in chemistry. I'm never going to become a chemist. I, I don't care about the periodic table. I don't care that K is for potassium. And why is K for potassium anyway? There's not a Good. K in the whole world. Uh, I'd like to, for him to be able to say, you know what, I'd like, instead of going to period four every day and studying chemistry, I'm going to study presentation skills. Yeah. I'm going to study, uh, I'm going to study uh, things that, that are going to perhaps be useful in, no matter what I do. And I think the other thing, Matthew, is I think we do have to prepare people to have a little bit more portfolio in their careers. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what's yeah. going to happen. And, and I know because I, I have a portfolio career and I love it. It's so fabulous to do very different things and applying some of those universal human skills to all those very, very different things. I think I think that is what is coming a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And because uh, uh, for a lot of people, that's going to be more fulfilling than being locked down uh, in one career. As we know, like the idea that you, you know, learn something and you're going to do that for the rest of your lives. As, as people know, you know, at some point in the middle in their career, they think, hey, you know what? I've, I've made it. I've done everything I can do with this career. Yeah. Maybe it's time yeah. to, to do something new. And to enable that, I think, would be uh, would be really liberating for people. It's really exciting. So let's just just try and want to crystallize one of those things. Imagine for your lad age 14. So the job that wonderful child might do today, that job doesn't exist. It has not been invented. It's mind blowing. So having a set criteria is fairly pointless. So Jack, given a magic wand, what are you dreaming of in terms of an educational scenario? Well, now, if my son Alfie walked into his school, whenever he does walk into his school again, yeah. or whatever year yeah. that will be in, uh, if he were to walk into school and say, forget it, chemistry, I don't care, I'm not going to do my GCSE, I'm going to learn presentation skills. Of course, he'd probably be slapped, sent into detention, <laughs> and we'd get a letter home and have lots of conversations. However, there are people, I think people in organizations do have the ability, the liberty to do something in a different way. So I guess if you are... If you are working in an organization now, I challenge you to walk into your organization and say, do you know what? Instead of this X, Y, and Z that you're telling me I have to learn to do my job, I want to design my own learning package. I know where I want to get to. I have a sense of the skills that, that will take me there. Let me design my own package. Just give me, a, give me a voucher. Give me a voucher for learning, and I promise I'll, I'll use it. 
I'll report back on it. I'll report back on the on the, the value of it. I will uh, be consci consciously show you how I am using my learning. I will I will you know make a report of that. And, and I suppose as, as well, if you are one of those people who is in control of the learning budget, I challenge you to liberate your learners. Say to them, do you know what? You decide. You tell us what you want to learn. And not, we're not going to universalize this. We don't want people, any more people, showing up on training courses thinking, this has nothing to do with my job. I don't want to be here. I hate it. I'm just doing it because my boss, as my boss's boss, said I have to complete this to get to the next level. Let's get rid of all that. Let's create a, a learner led environment yeah. inside our organizations and then see what happens. I love it. So Willy Wonka and the Education Factory, love it. And it's that Venn diagram, isn't it? Are you good at it? Do you like it? Is there an application for it? Will it make money somehow? And where that, mm. uh, where the four circles overlap, that is where the, the, the special place is. So, well, I think we've, we've transferred more than enough to frustrated pseudo-teachers. It's almost Friday. Not that your kids will change their behaviour, particularly tomorrow. They'll probably wake you up early and go, school's out, what are we going to do and play? What is our challenge to the viewer today, Jack? I think, I think our challenge to the viewer is, is just to, to, to take charge. Take charge of what you want to learn and uh, take charge of where you want to go. In fact, even to take it a step further, take is there a, a way that you can take charge of what you do at work? Yeah. And there's, nice. a, there's a concept from the U.S. It's called job crafting. It allows people to, instead of having a job description and say, with this job description, you need to do this and this and this and this. It asks people, hey, what do you want to do? What motivates you? What energizes you? Let's make sure you spend 80% of your time doing those things and define that. And let's go through that 20% that you hate. Let's give it to someone who that's the, <laughs> the bit that really they love that energizes them. And yeah. uh, just to think about uh, taking a personalized approach to employment, saying, listen, this is where I do my best work. This is what I'm really good at. Why don't you uh, take all this other stuff off my hands, if possible? And and obviously, that's going to that's going to change my motivation, my engagement with work, my energy level, my uh enthusiasm for my organization, doing the things that are going to extend me that I want to do. And also, I suppose, alongside that are going to allow me to learn the things that I want to learn in order to progress and order, of course, to give back, because that's the whole point of education, right? We learn to give back, to give back to other learners, to give back to our society based on what we've learned and what we're able to do. So this is an act of, it's kind of a selfish act in a way, yeah. but it's a selfish act in order to give back to society. Lovely, lovely. If our punters, our viewers, were to leave a comment, what would you like to read about? Yeah, what would you like to learn? What would, if, if your company was going to give you a voucher, the Golden Willy Wonka Education <laughs> a Factory Voucher, what would it be for? What would you like to learn? What's on the ticket? Jack, as always, you are a superstar. Well done with Formal Friday. Good luck for the weekend. Then waking you up early. And let's learn those football curling skills. Viewers, thank you Absolutely. so much. Like, subscribe, come back next time. You are welcome. Jack is welcome. This is your channel. All right. See ya.